Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So we're going to do something a little bit different in this one. We're going to start off with a little bit of theory about what the game instance is. And then we're going to jump over to Unreal and we'll take a little bit of a look at how you can use it, set it up and some good practices for while you're in there. So basically the game instance is one of the most important blueprints or blueprint classes you have in your game slash project. Uh, essentially the game instance in UE4 and UE5 is what's called a manager class. Basically, it has the ability to manage data between levels as it's not destroyed when changing levels in your project, unlike every other blueprint. So in Unreal, when you start a new level, your variables in your player and all that is reset to, to their default values. But the game instance exists between that gap. So it exists in the background and then it can be used to set information in the player once they're created. For example, without a game instance, changing levels will reset all variables to their default, which is what I just said like your player's health, money, score, etc. Uh, it's including weapons, unlocks, you name it, it'll all be reset. However, storing your variables inside your game instance allows you to store these variables, redistribute them when the level begins. So this means you can use it to store data that your game might need. For example, player health, which is a float value, score, which is an integer, ammo integer, weapons unlocked, actor arrays, collectibles found, actor arrays, and then every variable that you need access to periodically or over the lifetime of your project can be created inside of this game instance. So don't worry about thinking what don't I need. If you've got a variable and it has to exist between levels somewhere, it needs to be inside your game instance. So the easiest way to think of the game instance is more like a hub, a location which gathers all the information you need while playing and all the information which is needed once the game starts. So this allows for multiple things to be possible. For example, blueprints can read information from the game instance at runtime, and they can even set information. So let's say you have a game where a level has multiple crates in the world, and you want them to stay open after, you, after they've been looted, essentially. You could assign each crate a number, this is just off the top of my head, and store it in an integer variable or an array. So if the chest is opened, you send that number to an integer array, in the game instance, let's say the variable is called chest opened. Now, when the chest is interacted with, we add the numbers of the chest to the game instance array. Then, when the level starts, you can get the array, compare all the numbers in said array against the number assigned to the chest, and have the chest perform an action. So, if you've got a chest in the world, you give it a number, you send that number to the game instance once it opened, and then once the level restarts, the chest looks to the game instance and says, are we in this array? If we are, then we've already been looted, so set it to open and then do what it needs to do. So it means you don't have to destroy it in the world, you can kind of repurpose stuff and do different things. So separately, you could have a chest store the actor itself into an array in the game instance. Then once the game instance is initialized, you could have it call a binded event in the chest to make it do something. This would stop every chest doing a check of an array and only chests will have been opened would actually be called. So it's a bit of a performance thing, kind of depends how you want to set it up, but just keep that in mind. You could also store information like damage multipliers so enemy AI can access the multiplier and have it affect the level when it begins. Really any information at all, no matter how it's used, if it needs to move between levels, can exist in the game instance. So key piece of information is none of this has to happen at the beginning of the level either. You can push and pull data at the game instance at any point in time during the level or during gameplay. So it's important to note, as long as the game isn't closed, then the information set in the game instance won't be reset. And then this brings us on to saving game instance data between games. So if you close the project, then it won't reopen that information inside the game instance. You'd have to populate it again. But what you could do is you could use that game instance to set a save game component uh, save game data basically and then on start have it repopulate the game instance and because the game instance repopulates everything else it kind of works as a hierarchy so it'll all work together but what we're going to do in this one is I'm going to show you how to set up the game instance we'll do setting up a level as well so we can go back and forth as well as some blueprints to create some health and stamina variables that we can change and the key focus is really going to be me showing you how to use event dispatches as well to make that process even easier of sending and setting information as well as sending it to UMG. So all the talking done, we're gonna jump right over to Unreal and then we'll get started. So we'll see you there. So I've just got the third person template up and open. 
what we need to do is we need to set up a new level. So we're going to do file new level and we'll do the, uh, let's do default just because it's visibly different. It doesn't have any VR stuff in it. So I'm going to add some cubes in the corners so we can get bearings. It allows us to move around. But what we want to do is actually go to our original map and we need to set up a way to change levels. So I could have done this while we were talking, but I thought it would be easier to do afterwards. So if anybody's actually trying to follow along, they can they can do that. So maps, I realize we've already got a maps folder, so we don't need one. Maps um, underscore second level save. So with us being back in the first person, what we need to do now is set up a way to change levels. So we're going to do a blueprint actor. So we're going to do actor. Uh, this would be BP underscore change level. We will open this up and all we really need is a collision, but we need a place so we know where to move to. <laughs> so we'll do a sphere and then we'll do a collision. Uh, let's do a box collision. We'll do it around. We'll just make it a little bit bigger. And then from here, if we do rename collision, we'll do event begin overlap. So really, we don't actually have to do anything. The only thing that's going to overlap this collision here is our player. So we can literally just do drag off and do open level. And we do open level by object reference. Because what that allows us to do is just select our second level from our dropdown. And we can even create this a variable and then make it public. So we compile. We can then select this when we drag and drop it into our scene. So we go to details panel. We select the right one. We got our second level. So now when we walk over to it, we then load our actual second level. So what we want to do now is actually send some information with it. So there's a couple of things we could do for that. But before we actually get started, we need to create our game instance. And to do that, we just right click blueprint class. And then we search for game instance. And you can see we've got game instance and platform game instance. We just need game instance. So we select that GI or we'll do get game instance underscore third person game instance and you'll see in here it's basically an empty event graph where we can store and add basically our blueprint code but for this to actually take place and work correctly we first need to go to our project settings so edit project settings and then maps and modes and we've got game instance here at the bottom so we add our gi third person game instance and now what this does is every time we start our game, our game is going to look for this file and it'll read all them variables. Uh, from what I'm aware, you can't actually change this at runtime. So you have one game instance that works for the entire game. And then you stick with that, which is the easiest way to do it. So we're going to save all. Now we actually have our game instance created. We just need to figure out what variables we want to transfer between scenes. So what we really need to do is a way for us to visualize what our variables are. So the easiest way to do this is probably with a UMG. So we're going to do user interface, widget blueprint, widget blueprint underscore layer info. And then in here, we're going to add what we need. So we just need some text. So this could be health. I'm not going to do a health bar or anything like that. We're just going to do some values just because we're going to add a little bit more, a little bit quicker that way. So stamina, and we're just going to change these values manually so we can actually see how it works. Or we'll actually create a blueprint, which actually changes these for us. So health, stamina, that should be enough health. So this will be our value. And then we need to set these, but at the minute our player doesn't actually have any variables. So if we go to our player, we can create a new variable and we'll call this health. And what I'll do is I'll set this to an integer because I want it to be whole numbers. And then stamina will be our, we'll do float. Stamina, we'll mix them up. It's not mixing up much, but we'll do it that way. So health default will be 100. Stamina will also be 100. Now in our player info, we've got our text block. We want to make this a variable so we can actually set the text. I'm going to duplicate it. So this will be our stamina. So, so rename this just so we know what they are. And I'm going to set the anchor points for these all to be center just so they don't move. I'll save. So now in our third person character, we can add these to our screen. So event graph. So I think with this template, we actually have a begin play somewhere. Nope. It's been a while since I've been in the third person. So do event begin play. We create widget, which we play info, and then we add to viewport and now compile save. If we play, we should hopefully see that information on the screen. So we got health stamina. It's really bad, but it does the job. So now, we want to actually set these values variables to our information. So graph, what we do is on construct, we can get player character for this one. Then we cast to our to third person player and we create a reference to our player. And now that we actually have a reference to our character, all we need to do is go actually go back to the designer. And if we select our text for health, so we want this value to change, 
we can go to bind, select properties from our third person character, and then just choose our health variable. And then we do the same thing for our stamina. So properties stamina, we select stamina. And then once we compile, if we change our third person stamina to a different value than 100, so we can see the difference, let's do 75. When we press play, we can actually see that those values are there and updated now. And if we transfer, they'll stay the same. We can't go back, so it might be worth adding another change level to the actual second level. So blueprints, change level, let's remove that sphere. And then we pop this in like so, third person. So now we can actually go back and forth. And here we can actually set up some another blueprint to subtract from our health variables. So this is the easiest way of actually displaying it. So blueprint class, actor, BP underscore uh, damage. Yeah, let's just call it damage. So let's create a, it will do a plane. So we know where it is in the world. And then we want a collision box. So it's important to remember that this isn't actually, you don't actually have to do all of this or set up the blueprints exactly like this. You can have it any way you want. I'm just doing this as an example to show you how you can set the information up and how they communicate between each other. So box on component hit, we check to see if it's our player. So we do get, let's do get yeah, character. And I've just realized we don't want the on hit, we want on overlap. So select our box on begin overlap. And then what we can do is from our other actor, we do an equal. So we check to see if our player is actually crossing over because we might not want it to attack anything else. And then we can do a branch. So if it is, so now that we actually have our branch, we can tell it what to do. So rather than doing the cast every single time we start, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a begin play. So we might as well try and keep good practice. So we'll do begin play, cast to third person. I'm so used to using the VR, the VR template that I keep going for VR porn. So get player character. And then we literally just set this to a variable. So third person character. So now on the begin play, we only do this once and then we can actually get a reference to this. So we get our third person player and now we can get the health. So we're gonna start by getting the health, which we then subtract from our int and we'll subtract 10. And then we set our health again. So set health, pop that back in there. So if our player is the one that's overlapping the collision, we say it's true. We then get our player reference from our original begin play. And then we can get our health value and then subtract 10 from it. So this will update our new health variable. And you might be wondering why we don't actually need to put an event on this to set the information. Well, the thing is with a bind inside of our player info is it automatically actually updates. It works as like a typical function. So anytime the variable is changed, this value will update. So it means we don't have to do an event to either the widget to say fire again, because the player update, the health has changed or the third person player. We don't have to fire an event in there to say that as well. So all we have to do is go to our second level, drag and drop in our damage pad. If I disable snapping, it's always the wrong one every time I do it. So now we can press play. We can change our health variable. And if we can say after the disable message stuff, pretty difficult. Let's change our location and we'll set the color to black. We can then go over it and we can change our health variable. And now because we've got it set up in such a way, if we go to the other level, it resets. That's specifically because we haven't set it up in our game instance that we want to get that information from the player. So what we do is our third person character. Now we need to actually set up our game instance so we store the information. So first thing we do is actually cast to our game instance. So we've got a reference to it. And our game instance is GI underscore third person game instance. And we're gonna add that after our event begin play. Actually, we'll do it beforehand. It would be a bit easier to do. Event begin play, cast to our third person game instance. And then from our object, we actually made our game instance. So get game instance. So now we get our game instance, we know where it is, and then we can create a variable from this. And now we can actually access this variable and use it in different ways. So what we need to do here is actually set up a way to send our health to our player. So at the minute, our health just updates inside of our, basically our UMG, our widget. So we could go through here and we can set up a health, which would be a good thing to do. So every time our health is updated, we change the value here as well, or at least we get it, we call it. So instead of doing this here, so when we set up our BP damage, I mentioned that we need events to fire this information. So I forgot that we actually, we do need to do this because we won't have a way to actually send the information to our game instance unless we have an event to fire. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the event dispatcher. So event begin play, we're gonna say update health. 
and then we're actually going to use this so if you don't know what an event dispatcher is i recommend you go checking out my other video on event dispatchers and how they work because i can go a little bit more in depth than that but basically what we can do is we can do an assign and what this means is it will always be listening to other blueprints and other code that wants to fire it so from here we can have our bind update health event we have our health so we get this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually give this an integer variable so if we go if we select our update health event dispatcher we can do integer health and now we can actually send this information so we cast to our game instance so G gi game instance and we're not actually going to put this here we're going to put this at the beginning of our event begin play because we only need to do it once we don't need to do it every time our health updates so from here we do game instance and now what we can do is we can actually create a reference to our game instance and we've got access to this anywhere in the player blueprint when it starts so rather than calling it every time we just do it once which is pretty helpful and it's a bit it's a bit more better practice but what that allows us to do now is actually get our reference to our game instance and then set our player health. While recording this, my game crashed, so I can't remember if I added our variables into our game instance. But if we didn't, we're going to redo it again. So our health is going to be an integer health and then our stamina will be a float. Cool. So because we've got these in here now and they exist, we can actually call it from our game instance reference variable. So we set health and we've got our new health and that's pretty much it. So when we start our new level, we actually set that information in our game instance. The issue is we don't repopulate it inside of our player to set the health. Now, since this is all hooked up and set to the game instance, we actually need to call this update health event. And what we need to do is actually go to our BP damage and we're gonna do it from in here. So we've got our third person character. So we search health and you'll see that we actually have our binds. All we're gonna do is gonna call update, gonna to connect to the end and then we're gonna hook up our set. So when it goes through, it sets our health, but it also updates our variable inside of our player right here. So ideally once we cross up our plate, it fires the, it subtracts the health, then it sends it here so we can set it and we've got access to it. So the main problem now is we're not actually pulling that information down to reset our health variable. And we need to do this when our player starts. So, so what we need to do now is actually make sure we set our health variable on begin play. So if we don't do this, when we transfer to the other level, it won't update because it won't be pulling information down when we first start. But what we can do here is actually drag in our health. We can set our variable. And what we wanna do is because our event begin play starts up here, we want it to fire once on start. So if we put it here, then our health can actually plug into this value here. So we get our health from our third person game instance. So what we need to do is make sure our game instance health matches our player health. So I've already done this, so it was on zero, default to 100. And now when we start, our player will have their health update as well. And we actually want to put this in here so it updates every time this is fired. And because we're using event dispatches, it means it's really easy to do in our game instance. So we can do, Initialize, my computer is messing up, so I'm gonna be right back, I'm gonna restart real quick. So I'm back, I've only got the third person character window open in the third person game instance now. So what we're doing is we're setting up our game instance. So the information here sets the information in our game instance. The issue is it doesn't pull it back down, apart from this set health, which gets our health from our game instance and then populates it in. So what we wanna do is we wanna to go to our game instance and we could do initialize or we could do our custom event. I'm actually gonna do initialize. So there's an event in it. So once it's created, it actually populates that data for us. The only thing we need to do is add a little bit of a delay to let the other blueprints load in in time. You're probably best using an actual custom event to fire this, but I don't think big gameplay exists. Nope. So we've got this. What we wanna do is we wanna to cast to our player. So anywhere we're setting information, we wanna send that information to, we need a reference. So we're gonna cast to third person player or character, and then we wanna get character. So there it is, get player character. And now we actually have a reference to our player which we can store and compile. And now what we need to do is actually update our information in our player. So if you remember, we've got our update health. This updates our variable for us. So we just need to call this. We don't need to do any custom events or set anything up like that. We literally just need to call update health event. So we drag off here, update, so 
health. So we've got call update health. And you can see here we've got a value we can put in. We're just going to drag in our health, get health, and plug that in there as well. So compile save. And now we test it. We should be able to go to our other level, use our health pad to reduce our health. And then we test it and we go back. Our values are stored. And then we can go between levels again and work on it that way. So that's an easy way of doing it. And then because of the setup that we've got, we could even go to our secondary map. Actually, we'll do it here. We'll stay in our third person map, blueprints. Our damage pad, we will move over here and we'll set it so it adds health rather than subtracts. And we can do that by just going to our blueprint and we can promote our value. And in here, we have the subtract. I'm gonna change this to a plus, pop that on there. For this variable health, we're the default of 10. So now we add to it. But if we make our damage pad health variable public, what we should be able to do is actually set this to a value of negative 10 or minus 10. And then every time we walk on it, we subtract health. So we can have one blueprint do multiple things. So in here, we'll have it add health. And then we'll go to our next level. It does it again because we didn't change it there. So rather than doing same there, we'll just leave this as negative. It's me trying to make this up as we go. So we subtract health here. And then in our other level, we add our health back on and then it stores as well. So you can imagine how this can work between levels and you could do this for the stamina as well. It's just a case of setting up our, our another event dispatcher. So this will probably be a timer thing. So it would subtract based on time, but we could do set stamina and we do the exact same thing. We do a bind custom event, set stamina instead of stamina. Let's just remove space. That's because a variable already exists, like it's saying. And we want to add a float value to this because that's the type for our, that's the type that it is. So stamina, mine bugs for some reason and doesn't update. So I'm going to delete that custom event, and then you see it's already added in. Okay, variables messing up, update, stamina. Cool, now we do the exact same thing. So we get our game instance, set stamina, and then get, we then set it, our health, so our player stamina, and now these are both listening. So in our third person player, all we have to do is get our stamina, call stamina, and now we just need a way for us to modify that. So let's do, let's duplicate our damage pad, so BP underscore stamina. And because we've got the references and all that sort of stuff, we literally just need to get our stamina. Get stamina plus, rename this to stamina. Looked all right. So we remove these and then we set stamina in our game instance. No, we set stamina in our player. True, go from there. And then rather than the call health, we just call stamina. Stamina to subtract, that's all right, save. And then got stamina pad on the left. And the reason it went to zero is because we didn't actually set it in our game instance before we did it, whereas it is there. So in our game instance, stamina <clears throat> default, I think is 75. We'll check it against our stamina on third person, 75. And let's have a look if that works now. So 80, 95, didn't. That is resetting in our game instance. So I think the the issue here is I have this on initialize and I don't think it needs to actually do that. So 1895, 175. Hmm. So this happened because I was trying to be lazy and use the same one. So we're going to use the health. So we'll do set health on start and we'll connect this to our game instance like so. And then we're going to do the same thing for our stamina game instance like so. So hopefully now when we start, it's 100, zero stamina should be, or is our game instance stamina zero? Yep. 75, make that match. Do this a couple of times. So 60, 125, 60, 125. There we go. And then we can go back. And the best thing is because this is set up in such a way, we can sit like really easily like combine both of these. So we could take the damage pad, we could duplicate it, BP underscore damage and stamina. And then in here, all we really have to do is call our stamina now. Call set stamina. So we do the exact same thing. So we get stamina plus remote stamina. I know it's saying the same thing quite a bit, but then we just get our third person player and then we just set it. Actually, I think we can actually bypass this. So yeah, going back through, we can actually remove these parts, the sets, because we're doing the call and we're setting it in there instead. So that just tidies it up a little bit. So we got this one call into there. Oh, so we've got our, so it's damage, stamina, and then damage and stamina. And I need to make sure that variable's public as well. I'll save. So now both of these can actually add to the same one just by that call, just because we got the reference. So 90, 85, let's do 70, 95. And then we cross over this, they both change to 80, 120. And then we cross levels, they stay the same and they go from there. So line them back up and then we go as so. So this is one way to show how powerful 
game instance actually is, especially if you set it up the correct way. And I know this video is probably a little bit more in depth and might be a little bit more confusing than what you think it is. But if you're struggling with the idea of the event dispatches and how you can use them to send information rather than the casting stuff, then I highly recommend checking out that video, which is on the channel and I will link it in the description if I don't forget. If I do forget, remind me and I'll put it down there. But for now, this is pretty much how to set up a game instance and what it is. So it is a hub that you can store variables inside of and you can send them variables out and into other different things, which is exactly what we're doing here. So we have our blueprints, which send our values to our game instance. And then our game instance sends those values to our player, which we update. So hopefully this made sense. It might not be a perfect tutorial, but the idea is to just get you thinking about how you can use a game instance and the different ways it can be used to save and set data. And that brings me on to the final topic of this. What a game instance allows you to do is actually save the data. So when you close Unreal Engine or you close your game, the game instance is reset then. But what you can do is inside of the game instance, you can actually create a save file. So rather than saving individual assets, you can then just save the health information stamina, basically the entire game instance folder. You save that and then you can have that populated back in as well, which is where you would initialize the save game. Then it would initialize the game instance, which then populates everything using these calls to your player or other blueprints. So that's it for this one. If you want to get your hands on this template file, I'll put it up on the Patreon as well as my notes that I made while writing this, which is more like a little bit of a script. But if you need any help, just feel free to head over to Discord, ask any questions, or leave them in the description below. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.